In its fledging year as South Africa's formula of the future, the Stanek Sackcar Series was headed for an exciting climax at the final national championship meeting of the year at Kyle Army on October 30th. Touring car racing currently enjoys unprecedented success in Europe and Australia. The introduction of a two-liter formula saw South Africa join the worldwide swing to a category of racing that now rivals Formula One in the popularity stakes. The Stanek Sackcar Series made its debut at Kyle Army on May the 1st. It was soon evident that Opal Racing was going to be the team to beat. Former South African Drivers' Champion Mike Briggs won both opening rounds of the series in the superbly prepared Opal Astra. The battle lines have been drawn by Opal Racing with Briggs soon joined in the team by former motocross champion Grant McLeary. The pair were the dominant force in the Sackcar Series and the only time they momentarily lost their way was when first Briggs and then McCleary crashed while leading mid-season rounds of the series at a cold, wet and windy East London Grand Prix circuit. Going into the Kyle Army finale, Briggs held an 11-point lead over arch-rival Dion Joubert. If it was quickly evident that the Opal Astros were the cars to beat in the Stanek Sackcar Series, it was equally evident that their biggest challenge would come from BMW South Africa. The Johnson Matthey BMW team did not get off to the best of starts at Kyle Army in May. An unexpected win at Velcom provided Johnson Matthey BMW team with a boost, and drivers Dion Joubert and Tony Viana took full advantage of Opal lapses at East London to emerge as strong championship contenders. The victory by Viana in East London was an emotional moment. Those in the know knew Viana was losing a fight against cancer, and East London was to be his last race. Viana was replaced in the BMW team by Jeff Goddard with backing from Castrol Futron. Consistency ensured that both the drivers and manufacturers' championships would go to the wire at Kyle Army. The Minolta Toyota Challenge in round one was over within half a lap when teammate Serge Damso and Mike White tangled. The Kyle Army outing set the tone for Toyota's season. Encouraging results in Velcom were offset by reliability problems. The Minolta Toyota Sprinters were withdrawn from sack car events at Kalani and Kyle Army, with the backroom boffins rebuilding the cars in time for the Kyle Army finale. Nissan were late starters in the Stanek Sackcar Series. A lone BP Nissan Sentra made its debut in East London in the hands of rally star Nick Deval. The Sentra showed immediate potential, but was also hit by teething problems. Each subsequent outing saw Nissan make progress, and for the October outing at Kyle Army, a second Sentra joined the fray with former rally champion Hannes Krobler driving. Stanek Sackcar also produced a David versus Goliath story. The lone privateer playing the role of David against the manufacturer's Goliath was Clarkstorp car dealer Farouk Dangor. Teething and reliability problems also hit the enthusiastic speedy car sales team and the BMW M3. Never in with a realistic chance of challenging the factory teams, Dangor refused to give up and the points the team earned were just reward for tenacity. There were also bit players in the Stanek Sackcar series. With engine backing, Volkswagen were busy developing a pair of VW Jettas for Terry Moss and Chris Aberdeen, but neither car turned a wheel in anger. Privateer Carlos Capella contested one round of the series in a BMW M3 before also deciding to sit out the rest of the season to carry out additional development work. Stanek proudly presents highlights of rounds 15 and 16 of the Stanek Sackcar series from Kyle Army. After six months of racing with visits to six South African circuits, the Stanek Sackcar Series reached a climax at the AA Racing National Finals at AA Kyle Army on October 30th. For the Opal Racing and Johnson Matthey BMW teams, the stakes were high. Both teams had a shot of winning the first Sackcar Series titles on offer, and that meant pressure on technicians and drivers. The Minolta Toyota and BP Nissan teams were also keen to end the season with impressive performances. It set the scene for some interesting motor racing. Going into the AA Kyle Army finale, Mike Briggs led Dion Joubert by just 11 points in the Drivers' Championship. Grant McCleary was third, with the late Tony Viana still fourth on the leaderboard.
The Stanek Sack Car Series utilizes the IndyCar style of qualifying. The cars are out of the circuit one at a time with drivers allowed a warm-up lap, two flying laps and a slowdown lap. The fastest of the two flying laps counts towards grid positions. Under the supervision of Clark of the Course, Dave Clapham, drivers draw lots to determine the qualifying starting order. The drivers manage to project a carefree attitude to the draw, but the Indy style qualifying adds a new dimension to the Stanek Sackcar series. With only two flying laps, there is no room for error, and the friendly camaraderie at the draw marks growing tension among the drivers and teams. Pole position not only provides an advantage at the start of a race, the man on pole position has also struck an early psychological blow. After missing four rounds of the Stanek Sackcar series while the Minolta Sprinters were rebuilt, there was more than the usual tension in the Toyota camp. With teammate Serge Damso looking on, Mike White was first out on the official qualifying session. The car is very responsive, the engine feels good, but overall I think we need to do a lot of more testing and developing. White is a former British Formula 3 champion where he raced against the likes of Nigel Mansell and has developed into a seasoned saloon car veteran. While White was marshalling his resources for the assault on the stopwatches, Dion Joubert was warming up for his stint out on the circuit. Apart from the tension it generates among teams, the Indy style qualifying format provides the drivers with one major problem. With only one warm-up lap, it's often difficult to heat the slick racing tyres to their optimum operating efficiency. With grid positions at stake, drivers are forced to take a risk or two. And on cold tyres, this can lead to some interesting moments. Next out in qualifying was Johnson Matthey BMW driver Dion Joubert, just back from the FIA Touring Car Challenge at Monza. We learned a lot from the from the, the top teams um, in terms of using our onboard computer mode to show me how to drive the car, how to uh, utilize the computer to show us where, where, we, where we're gaining time or we spend more time debriefing now looking at laps we've done. I think that's the main lesson we learned from, from those guys. While the drivers are out on the circuit fighting it out against the stopwatches, anxious crew members crowd around timing monitors in the pits. With a title at stake, Joubert was pushing as hard as he could down the notorious Kyle Army mineshaft and was forced to lock up the brakes as he stormed into Continental Corner. Joubert was letting it all hang out in his quest for quick lap times. He ran a little wide at the exit of the flat-out Caltech sweep and then it was down through the gearbox for the tight left-hander, christened Bungie Bend by Kyle Army Marshals, that leads onto the main straight. The Stanek sack cars quickly accelerate to well in excess of 200 k's an hour down the start finish straight, with Joubert's lap times quick enough to give him provisional pole position ahead of Mike White. But with seven drivers still to complete their qualifying session, it meant an anxious wait for the BMW team. Privateer Farouk Dangor in the speedy car sales BMW M3 was also pushing as hard as he could. Indy style qualifying produces 11 tenths motoring from the drivers with a popular Clarkstorp car dealer using every centimetre of available track. Dan Gore was followed out on the circuit by newly crowned South African rally champion Serge Damso in the second Minolta Toyota Sprinter. Back in the pits, former rally champion Hannes Frobler looked as though he didn't have a care in the world. <laughs> With a string of national and provincial rally and racing titles to his name, Serge Damso is one of the most versatile drivers ever produced in South African motorsport. A week before the Kyle Army race, Damso and navigator Vito Bonafidi clinched their second successive national rally championship, with the Toyota team hoping for an impressive performance from one of Somerset West's favourite sons. One of the favourites in the pole position stakes, Grant McCleary, started his racing career on two wheels. A South African junior motocross champion in his younger days, McCleary has spent most of his car racing career driving for Opel dealer and factory teams. A graduate of the tough Stanek Group N school, McCleary has provided series leader Mike Briggs with solid support throughout the season. The onboard camera mounted on the McCleary Opel Astra provides a bird's eye view of a sack car being pushed to the limit. Thank you.
Back in the pits, McCleary's teammate Mike Briggs was preparing for his stint in the second Opel Astra. McCleary's fastest lap was good enough to put him on the provisional front row of the grid with former world stock car champion Jeff Goddard next out in the Castrol Futron BMW. A former BMW works driver in Stanic Group N Racing, Goddard replaced the late Tony Viana in the BMW sack car squad. With Dion Joubert in the Johnson Matthew BMW and Grant McCleary on the provisional front row of the grid, the man of the moment was Mike Briggs in the second of the Opel Astras. Briggs has been the dominant driver in the Stanic sack car series this season and was a hot favourite to take pole position. comes from a racing family and although still in his early 20s has a wealth of experience behind him he started out in karts is a former national champion in the group n standard saloon car category and a season or two ago also won the south african drivers championship when he dominated the formula gti single seater category mike has also driven sports cars and modified saloons and has taken to sack cars like a duck to water car seems to have been built with Kyle Army in mind. The car is just so good around here. It handles well. It's very easy to drive around here. And uh, it's certainly been the pace setter. And uh, it makes it makes life a lot easier for myself. You know, the car is superb. As was expected, Briggs pushed teammate Grant McCleary and Dion Joubert off the top of the pole position leaderboard. With just the two BP Nissan centres of Hannes Robler and Nick Deval left to qualify, it looked as though Briggs had a tight enough hold on pole position. And there appeared to be a few last minute worries for Nick Deval as he waited for his turn to go out onto the circuit. Hannes Krobler has a distinguished career in motorsport behind him. A former South African rally and off-road champion, Krobler has raced for years in standard saloon cars, but was making his sack car debut in the beautifully turned out Nissan. A misfire did not help Krobler's cause in qualifying, and it was left to Nick Deval in the second Nissan to see if he could bump Briggs off pole position. Another top rally driver who has made a successful transition to track racing, Duval designs and builds yachts when he's not behind the wheel of a race or rally car. Duval has quickly come to grips with the Nissan SAC car, which features a steering column mounted gear shift. As with all the SAC cars, the Nissan gearbox is sequential. For the layman, that means it operates along the same lines as a motorcycle gearbox, with the driver flicking the gear lever either backwards or forwards to move up or down through the gears. Duval really had the bit between his teeth and was pushing the centre to its limit. Duval went like the clappers on his first flying lap and there were smiles all around in the Nissan camp. Well, it was planned. Uh, I certainly wouldn't say it was easy. I had to try very hard. But again, I knew that uh, it was important to be on the front row of the grid. Uh, because I knew that the Nissan would be quick and uh, this, this race is really all about me clinching the championship. So I couldn't take too many chances, but I certainly tried very hard and uh, I think the, the grid is pretty representative of the type of racing we're going to see. Yeah, I'm very pleased with it. It's, it's fabulous. Uh, I only did one flying lap because uh, the uh, rear tyres were still a bit cold and the car was at a slight oversteer in it. And I decided that one lap was airy enough. I'm not going to do another one of those. As was expected, series leader Mike Briggs took pole position in the Opel Astra. One ultra-fast lap in qualifying put Nick Deval alongside him in the BP Nissan Sentra. Dion Joubert set the third fastest time in the Johnson Matthew BMW. Grant McCleary in the second Astra shared the second row with Joubert. Next up in the third row of the grid were Mike White in the Minolta Toyota Sprinter and Jeff Goddard in the Castrol Futron BMW. Serge Damso in the second of the work sprinters and Hannes Krobler in the second centre shared the fourth row with Farouk Dangor, the last of the qualifiers in the BMW M3. For the Minolta Toyota team back in action after missing four rounds of the series, there was room for a little optimism. We hard learned in the last two months. Uh, die technici het bijzonder hard gewerkt. Uh, op Zurtse motor het ons uh, paar meer veranderings als net die machine aangebring. 
maak sy motor, het ons net die machine verander. Op hierdie stadium voel ons redelijk gelukkig, ons is so wat 2 sekondes vinniger as wat ons uh, ooit voorheen was. Uh, dis ongelukkig nog nie goed genoeg nie, uh, ons verwacht nie om te wen vandag nie, maar ons verwacht om betrouwbaar te wees en ons verwacht om aan die einde van die wedren te wees. Uh, wat klaar een beetje beter is, is wat het voorheen was. Uh, ek moet sê, dit is helemaal verskillend van groep 1, maar ek geniet dit verskrikkelijk. Ek het nie geweet, ja, uh, dit sal so winnend wees nie. En ek weet nou hoe kom die um, hele formule so groot sukses oor see is. En ek, ek hoop dat ons uh, meer inskryfings hier gaan kry, dat dit hier ook so sukses gaan word. The SAC car finale helped bring spectators in their droves to Kyle Army. Around 27,000 spectators flocked to Africa's only Grand Prix circuit, and the pre-race driver parade gave the enthusiasts the opportunity to cheer on their favorites. There is nothing like a close race for a championship between rival manufacturers to stir the passions of motor racing enthusiasts, and the huge crowd was in a cheerful mood. <laughs> The cars are on their warm-up lap for round 15 of the Stanek Sack Car Series, and the adrenaline is starting to flow. Michael can play it safe, he only needs to come third, so maybe he'll be, he'll be a bit more careful. Um, Nick's a bit of a dark horse, so uh, he's got a lot to prove, a lot to show. Um, so perhaps Nick and I will be more aggressive than Michael, I would think, I don't know. Um, it's going to be a, a hard race. Nothing short of victory will do for Dion Joubert if he wants to keep alive his championship hopes. With Mike Briggs holding an 11-point advantage, Dion has no option but to go for broke. He'll, he'll be disappointed with third on the grid, and his first priority will be to put as much pressure as possible on Briggs and Nick de Waal. I think this is for Dion very important to be to be able to get by to get Briggs to come. And on the other hand, I think it's really important to be able to get Briggs to come. We've, we've really come up with a strategy and that is to win the championship. Winning the race will be a bonus. The first thing I have to do uh, is win the championship. So I'm not going to be taking any unnecessary chances. And it's just going to be a, a question of survival. The, the heat today is mind-boggling. We're obviously concerned about tyres. The wear and tear on the car is obviously so much worse. So it's just going to be a waiting game for me. I really have to wrap this championship up today. We're with the race cam in Grant McLeary's Opel Astra as the cars slowly make their way onto the start grid. The start is only moments away and McLeary is alongside Dion Joubert on the second row and has Nick Duval directly ahead of him. Looking forward from Grant McLeary's car, Duval has moved right over to the right-hand side of the track and it could just be that he's got some sort of problem. There is confirmation that Nick Duval does have a problem, and marshals are pushing the Sentra off the start line. Mike White has also gone missing, and that is the Minolta Toyota being pushed onto the side of the circuit. We have drama at Kyle Army with two cars out of the warm-up lap. Let's have a quick look at the layout of the 4.26 kilometer Kyle Army circuit as the lights turn to green and we're underway in the 15th round of the Stanek Sack Car Series. Mike Briggs has gone away cleanly in the Opel Astra and teammate Grant McCleary has slotted in behind him. That is just what the doctor ordered as far as the Opel team is concerned. With Briggs out in front, McCleary could ride shotgun on the championship leader. Onto the old pit straight and Briggs leads McCleary. Dion Joubert is third in the Johnson Matthew BMW with Serge Jamso tucked into fourth in the Minolta Toyota Sprinter. Jeff Goddard is fifth in the Castrol Future BMW and then comes Farouk Dangor in the BMW M3 and Hannes Kobler in the only VP Nissan Sentra left in the race. Probler has put some early pressure on Farouk Dangor as they head for the S's for the first time. Probler picks up a place as we go to race camp with Dion Joubert in third place. This is a situation Joubert won't like one little bit. Championship leader Mike Briggs is out in front and his teammate Grant McCleary between himself and Joubert. You can bet your boots McCleary won't make it easy for Joubert to get past and right now Briggs is sitting pretty. A great shot from Joubert BMW as the leaders fly down the mine shaft through the IGI sweep and hard onto the brakes for Continental Corner. Briggs leads McCleary with Joubert third and Serge Damso fourth in the Toyota and is not letting the front three get away from him. Hannes Krobler goes a bit wide as he comes out of Continental. 
Crobler has picked up a place and is six behind Jeff Goddard's BMW as the cars go steaming down the main straight for the first time. The end of lap one and the Opals are sitting pretty with Mike Briggs and Grant McCleary first and second. Dion Joubert is going to have to pull something out of the bag as we join Grant McCleary in the Opal Astra as the cars sweep through the total curves and head up to the tricky Nashua corner combination. McCleary is shadowing Briggs and you can be sure Opal team orders are that young Grant stays exactly where he is to ward off any attack from Dion Joubert who has to win this one. The BP Nissan team suffered a blow when Nick Duvall failed to get off the start line and now it looks as though Hannes Krobler has problems. Krobler is pulling onto the side of the track and there's more trouble for the Nissan team. That looks to be the end of Krobler's race and both Nissans are out of round 15 of the Stanek Sackcar series here at Kyle Army. Back to the action and Mike Briggs still leads Grant McCleary. It's Opal Astra 1 and 2 and the pair seem to have opened up a slight gap on Dion Joubert. Serge Danso is fourth in the Minolta Toyota and the South African rally champion is not letting Joubert get away from him. The leaders are onto the double left-hander at West Bank. This is one of the slowest parts of Kyle Army and then it's hard on the gas down the mine shaft which is one of the fastest sections of the circuit. There's not much joy in the Nissan camp with Hannes Probler struck out on the circuit. News from the Nissan pit is that an electrical fault sidelined Nick Devan on the start line and the team is working on getting the car ready for the second heat a little later in the afternoon. After seeing Nick Duval put the centre on the front row of the grid, it's a bitter disappointment for the Nissan team. Hannes Robler went out on lap two in the second centre, and with Mike White's Minolta Toyota failing to make it to the start, we already have three casualties. Lap five, and Mike Briggs is still out in front with Glam McCleary riding shotgun, and Dion Joubert now has serious problems. His championship hopes are gradually slipping away, and he needs to get closer to the two Opel Astros. Looking backwards from leader Mike Briggs and Grant McCleary is keeping a sensible distance behind his teammate. The last thing the two Opal drivers want is to take each other out and getting too close to Briggs increases the odds of a coming together. Serge Damso is still fourth in the Minolta Toyota Sprinter and having a good run. That's encouraging for Toyota. Oh, Damso's been given a hefty smack from behind. That looks like Jeff Goddard going through in the Castrol BMW. That was a West Bank. Serge is not a happy man. Goddard it was who gave Damso a whack and down the mine shaft the Toyota is slowing. There must be damage that's worrying Damso. We'll keep an eye on him as he approaches the entrance to pit lane. The leaders are through the Caltech sweep and Dion Joubert is losing ground to the two Opals. Mike Briggs is tightening his hold on this race and on the championship and there doesn't seem to be anything Joubert can do about it as the laps tick away and Serge Damso rolls slowly into the pit lane. That looks to be the end of the road for the Toyota. Retirements have pushed Farouk Dangor up into fifth place and both Nissans and both Toyotas are out of the 15th round of the Stanek Sackcar series at Kyle Army. The Toyota mechanics are already working on Damso's car and we can only hope Serge makes it to the line for the second heat. The Toyota took a heavy thump from Jeff Goddard's BMW and there looks to be suspension trouble. The electronic scoreboard says it all as Mike Briggs leads Grant McCleary. The two Opel Astras have run in tandem throughout this race and Dion Joubert's championship hopes are fading fast. We're on the last lap as Mike Briggs leads Grant McCleary through the S's and up the hill towards West Bank for the last time. With less than half a lap to go, Mike Briggs has the first Stanek Sackcar series in the bag. A win here will put Briggs out of reach where Dion Joubert is concerned. The two Opal Astros have run like clockwork and the opposition have not had a look in. Down the mine shaft at about 200 k's an hour, Grant McCleary is still shadowing Mike Briggs as they go through the sweep, flat out in sixth gear. Then it's down through the gearbox and onto the brakes for the hairpin at Continental. The two cars accelerate up the hill to Caltex towards the final corner and the Opal team can start popping the champagne corks. Kyle Army starter John Wheeler and the chequered flag are waiting for Mike Briggs and Grant McCleary in the Opal Astros. Out comes the flag and Mike Briggs and Grant McCleary give Opal Racing a 1-2 victory in the penultimate round of the Stanek Sackcar Series with Dion Joubert trailing home in third place. Jeff Goddard is fourth and Farouk Dangor fifth. Mike Briggs has won the inaugural Stanek Sackcar Series.
In between heats, the Opal Racing technicians decided on a little fun at the expense of Grant McCleary. They decided a change of name was called for. What do you think? Well, no, it's just about the fucking... My mother's always called me precious since I was a little kid. It's just going on, and I let these guys know. I could never have. Now they've hit on to it. And uh, I've got a bit of a surprise to see it on my car. They probably said they'd do it, and I didn't believe them. Dion Joubert was kept busy signing autographs while Nick Duval explained what happened on the Heat 1 warm-up lap. The car started misfiring on, its, uh, on the warm-up lap. And uh, it just, just before I got to the grid, the engine just cut dead. And I, of course, I had to pull off to the side because uh, I couldn't start the race. But uh, they fixed it now. It was an electrical problem. And uh, we'll be in there in the second heat, albeit on the back of the grid. For new champion Mike Briggs, radio interviews were all part of being in the limelight. The battle resumes in round 16 of the Stanek Sack Car Series. Stanek are proud sponsors of the SAC Car Series. Stanek, your motor vehicle finance specialists. With us, you can go so much further. The battle resumes in round 16 of the Stanek SAC Car Series. The final round of the Stanek SAC Car Series, and we have a full grid of cars except for Serge Damso in the Minolta Toyota. Serge went out on the warm up lap but decided the car was impossible to drive and will sit this one out. We wait for the green lights. And Grant McCleary was caught napping. McCleary looked to beat the green light, stopped and then got underway again. We'll have to wait and see if the start line judge of fact decides to penalise young McCleary as the cars stream into the total curves. We're riding with Mike White, with Nick Duval alongside of the Nissan Sentra, and Duval chops across alongside the Toyota's bowels. White won't like that. The cars are closely bunched and it's Briggs who again leads McCleary. Behind McCleary come the BMWs of Joubert and Goddard. Dangor is fifth, Krobler sixth with the Vault seventh ahead of Mike White and the Toyota. The championship has been decided and pride is all that's at stake in the final round of the Stanek Sack Car Series here at Kyle Army. That's a powerful motivator for these drivers and it looks as though we're going to have a real race on our hands. Briggs leads our high-speed train into the S's. Briggs is the first Stanek Sack Car Series champion, and he'll want to celebrate in style. As was the case in the first heat, it's an Opal 1-2, and we're still waiting to hear if any action is going to be taken against Grant McCleary for what might have been an indiscretion at the start. The leaders are into West Bank, and Dion Joubert is having a go at McCleary. Joubert is closer to the Opals than he was at any stage during round 15, and some battles are also starting to develop a little further back. This is the makings of a great race, and what a way to end the sack car season. Two Opal Astras lead two BMW 318s. Nick Duval is flying in the VP Nissan Sentra and is up to fifth and challenging Jeff Goddard. In car now with Nick Duval as he picks up another place as he nips through on the inside of the Caltech sweep. The end of lap one with Briggs ahead of McCleary. Joubert is third. Duval fourth and Goddard is back to fifth. Then comes Hannes Krobler, Mike White and Farouk Dangor. A sad sight for Toyota fans as the Serge Damso Minolta Sprinter is wheeled away. The technicians did their best to get Damso into the race, but damage after the first heat bang from Jeff Goddard was too severe, and Serge pulled into the pits at the end of the warm-up lap for the 16th and final round of the Stanek Sack Car Series. Back on the track, and Briggs leads McCleary, Joubert and Duval. Goddard is fifth, Krobler sixth, White seventh, and Farouk Dangor eighth in the BMW M3. Into turn five, and Dangor has a bit of a moment, and someone else is off. It's a Nissan, and it looks like Nick Duval, who charged from the back of the grid up into fourth place. It is Nick Duval, and what a disappointment for Nissan, with Duval out of action for the second time today. Lap five, and we're waiting for Grant McCleary to head for pit lane for a 10-second penalty for jumping the start. McCleary was shown the black flag on lap four and has to come into the pits for a stop-go penalty that will cost him a place or two. McCleary certainly hasn't wasted any time coming down the pit road. He was almost at racing speed before some heavy braking in front of Deputy Clerk of the Course, Clem Rowden. McCleary has rejoined the race in fifth place behind Briggs, Joubert, who is now second, Goddard and Robler. This is 
Goddard and Grobler, and Grobler is right on the BMW's tail, and this looks promising. The bottom of the mine shaft, and Briggs leads Joubert, who looks to be closing the gap a little on the Opel Astra. We're waiting for Goddard and Grobler, and this is the battle of the race. Grobler is swarming all over Goddard, who knocks up the brakes as he defends the corner. This is developing into a dogfight. Briggs and Joubert are through the Caltech sweep and heading for the main straight. Briggs has a bit of a cushion over the BMW, but the goddard Grobler battle for third place is the important issue right now. Here they come, and Grobler is going to try and go around the outside. That's a brave move. He's got a little wide and onto the dirt. The two cars are side by side down the main straight, and neither driver is going to back off going into the total curves. and Joubert is still chasing Briggs and the goddard Grobler battle is still raging. Goddard has slightly better lines through the total curves and that has kept him ahead of Grobler. Goddard was very late with his braking at Nashua and what a battle this is turning out to be. A lap and a bit to go and Briggs is heading for his second win of the day in the Stanek Sackcar series. This is round 16 of the series and still the Jeff goddard Hannes Grobler battle rages. Oh and Goddard has overdone it! Goddard's gone off! Jeff Goddard has gone into the tyre wall in the Castrol Futrum BMW. He left his braking way too late going into the tight left-hander and the car ploughed through the gravel trap and has hit the tyre wall. Goddard is frantically trying to get going again but it doesn't look as though he's going to make it. No! He's getting out of the car. Jeff Goddard's race is over and what a pity. A superb battle with Hannes Grobler has to end that way. The last lap of Mike Briggs is cruising towards his second win of the day in the final round of the Stanek Sackcar Series. The newly crowned champion has had a great season and there will be a huge celebration in the Opal Racing Camp tonight. Dion Joubert has closed right up on Briggs but he won't catch the champion as Briggs takes his second win of the day. Mike Briggs wins ahead of Dion Joubert with Hannes Frobler third in his sack car debut. That's a great result for Nissan with Grant McCleary fourth, Mike White fifth and Farouk Dangor sixth. It's been a great first season for the Stanek Sackcar Series. The formula has quickly established itself as a firm favourite with crowds throughout the country. Mike Briggs has established himself as a worthy champion. Dion Joubert finishes second in the championship with Grant McCleary third to complete a highly successful Sackcar season for Opal Racing. The car is certainly shown that it's it's getting better all the time. We, we started off being the quickest and we've just gone away from there. So I, I feel very good. Um, I, I was told a few minutes ago that I'll be getting a new car for next year. I guess that's a bonus for winning this year. So I feel very confident uh, for next year. But uh, it's been a year where I've won a lot, but I've also uh, a year where I lost. I lost a very dear friend and uh, I dedicate this championship to Tony Viana. Four years ago that he cares to remember, Gordon Briggs, Michael's father, drove a Ford Escort that carried the competition number triple one. Young Briggs and Opal Racing team manager Derek Marks were entitled to make a few minor adjustments. A quick look at the final championship positions. Briggs ended up with a 19-point advantage over Dion Joubert. Grant McCleary was third with 54 points and Jeff Goddard and Mike White fourth with 20 points.